fail, fail, fail. Whoa. Oh, arrow. Oh. Why are you when failing an arrow? Yeah, when did that I That was when we were playing Minecraft and Malachi said, fail, 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 fail. <laughs> I must have forgotten that episode. When I think of Minecraft, Malachi, and arrows, I always think of Alex in the same thought and the phrase, you leave me no choice. You leave me no choice. Man, Why I don't know. That's an old school reference, too. <laughs> It's always, Mal I, I always just have that image of Malachi in my mind getting hit with the arrow, catching fire, and dying. Just, I randomly transform into Malachi. We passed <laughs> Very <the> frustrating. <laughs> Whoever that editor was, they did a good job. Yes. This is the Player 4 Podcast. Join us each week as we talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests from the Rooster Teeth community. Player 4 has entered the game. Hello, and welcome to the Player 4 Podcast. I'm your host, Tristan, a.k.a. Shagrazir. Hi, I'm Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21. I'm Malachi, a.k.a. Tsukihiba. It may or no man, Joseph. How you doing tonight, Joseph? Uh, to do be me, voice. Ah, you are doing an accent for us. How come? Not an accent. I'm speaking Portuguese. Oh, okay. That's Joseph, how I'm doing. That's pretty much all I've been doing. I hear you're on location. I am on location. I'm at the park where there's barely anyone because uh, that's how I get my exercise and endorphins. And there are ducks and sometimes geese, and that's it. Watch out for those geese. And they'll give you a lot of exercise. Yeah. Those patos now follow us for the geese. <sighs> Look, I'm okay with Spanish. I know no Portuguese. It's just Spanish with the Italian hands. <laughs> that's the, that's the not Italian true. Hands. <laughs> I know two words. In, in Portuguese, and neither of them sounds anything like Spanish. Well, we have a fan in Brazil now. You have a fan in Brazil? We do. The, the, the podcast, he listened to some of our iTunes episodes that are really old. Oh, wow. Is there a way to have things just automatically go to iTunes, or do we still have to do that manually? It has to be done manually, and I'll probably just start doing it again. Uh so much to do, though. Yeah, I know. But how's everyone else? Uh, keep it safe. I mean, as safe as we can. Yeah. It's getting yeah. more difficult. Yeah. I, I do feel like this is, like, the, the prelude to the zombie apocalypse. You see how these these movies, the, the setting, the setup for all of these stories, video games, yada yada, happen, that people think it's nothing, and then they all infect each other, and then everyone dies. Well, Tristan, you you saw the, uh, the one thing I showed you. That's, the zombie apocalypse isn't yet. You still gotta get through the sodomy geese first. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this year does just feel like one plague after another. You know, we we got hit with the we got hit with the virus, and then we got hit with the bees, and then we got hit with uh, what came after that? Or something. Uh, I can't don't remember. forget the fires early in the year. Yeah, the no, there were the fires. There was the fires, oh, and Australia was just burning. Nobody was able to do anything about it. Nobody was doing anything about it. As far as I know, it stopped burning, but that might not be true. That that all got pushed to the back burner for uh, pun this. intended. Yeah, yeah, pun definitely intended. Even though it should be something really to joke about, because it's still terrible. It is not great. It has been not a good year, um, and uh, it is no accident. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, still working from home, uh, still slowly uh, draining my uh, willingness to do 
anything out over time, so I'm slowly becoming less and less uh, capable of doing things, so save me. How about Just Malachi? Hermit. Yeah. I am plugging away at life, just trying to stay safe and do work and adjusting to all the changes at work at any given time and uh, still just when I'm home, I'm pretty much staying home Um, and just playing video games here and there and looking forward to release of uh, Magic the Gathering's new Ikoria set still. Playing video games? I never get to play any video games with you. I've been doing the solo stuff. I've been doing a uh, the Final Fantasy Final fourteen Fantasy solo stuff. Seven and uh, some uh, Mobile Suit Gundam uh, battle, or yeah, battle operations and uh, freaking uh, Neo two. Sounds like just uh, an excuse to not play with you, Tristan. I I know. I heard it. No. I just haven't felt like playing certain games and Tristan hasn't said anything and I haven't been like, oh, hey, Tristan, I'm playing this game. You want to join me? Because usually we play Warframe, uh, Sea of Thieves, and... Overwatch. Overwatch. Because I have been pinging the Overwatch channel. I have seen a couple of pings, but I haven't felt like playing it. So, and you've been doing general, else. you do a general ping, not a specifically, hey Malachi, I want you to come play with me. I mean, yeah, that includes you. I'll remember that for next time. Alright, let's not tear the group apart. What have you been up to, Alex? Uh, working in a target hoping not to get sick even though people just like to come in and shop for stuff that they don't need um pretty much like malachi though playing games otherwise staying inside how about joseph wait didn't i already answer that question i think you answered (laughs) before we started recording Oh, okay. Um, well, I can complain about students if you want. Tell me about your students. That's student. a classic Whoa. topic. Give us the dirt. Okay, I'm going to have a disclaimer at the beginning of this that I understand we all deal with trauma in different ways. I also understand that uh, we all have differing levels of trauma during times like this. Um, but my job is to teach and then at the end of the uh, semester submit grades based off of work that was done. So with that in mind, I set the bar as low as I could, which is way lower than many professors across the world did, which was instead of having three hours of, of lecture a week for the main course I teach and two hours for the other two uh, not combined, uh, instead of doing that, it was more like one to two hours of lecture plus an assignment per class. And that was uh, not even figuring in that really there already were assignments on the syllabus. All I really did was take off one to two lectures for each class. So I tried my best to make it easier, but I don't know. I had three students who turned in everything, two students who got full-time jobs, and one student who wouldn't really talk to me until the day everything was due. And then would say they didn't have it done? Um, well, I've learned something. In the same way that I always knew that if a YouTube channel has an update video, that means it's about to die. If they take the time to make a video talking about what they're excited to be putting out soon, that means that's the last video you're going to see from them. Hmm. Uh, When I hear from a student saying, I'm sorry, I haven't turned anything in, I'm going to do it soon, I've come to not expect anything. That is a difficult position to be in. It is, because I want to be understanding, but also 
these are uh, most of these students are going to have me again next year and the material is going to get more difficult so i stripped down the material to the bare minimum but i can only do so much yeah. without sabotaging their progress next semester right so that's that's how it's been i submitted final grades on friday actually 45 minutes after they were due because i was giving people time and also making sense of my jumbled grade book that was a the combination of pre-spring break and post-spring break, offline and online, trying to figure out what grade they would get. And then they get to choose after the fact whether they want to keep the grade or turn it into a uh, credit or no credit. So then it wouldn't affect their GPA. Ah. So uh, now I've come to realize I can't remember the last time I played a video game that wasn't Magic Arena. Most of my time is just being home, doing nothing, talking to my language partners, and then going to the park. Right. Making progress on the language, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So how about you guys? Anything else? No. I didn't end up going to the uh, Japanese class today because I was just not mentally there. I didn't want to be a drag on it. So, he's mostly been dealing with that kind of emotion lately. Mm, yeah, I feel you. We Have did. you been doing your Japanese exercises like you were uh, at the RTX? We were hanging out and you were doing your exercises? I mean, I guess I'm always doing a little bit of something like that, yeah. That's good, at least. Yeah. Solo stuff just doesn't help as much as conversation, though. Oh yeah, totally. I get somewhere around 80 to 100 XP on Duolingo every day, and I learn a lot more just talking to people. Maybe I should plug back into Duolingo. Maybe. Maybe. You should. You can zoom through the lessons, and every time you're like, nah, I'm ready, then you just skip a lesson by hitting the key button. Hmm. Key button. We have been doing our D&D, though. How's yours going? Uh, <laughs> I, it will happen, I promise, but so far there's no new developments. Is this like that update video? I mean, I didn't think it would be, but it kind of is. It's going to happen, though. So that's why I'm really not giving too much detail. But the more detail I give... The more it is, I'm trying to compensate for the fact I've done nothing. Ah. But I did a whole lot in preparation for it, so there's not much left to do. All right. Uh, let us know when when things are going to get rolling and what you need us to do. Yeah, when things get rolling, rolling, rolling. I mean, maybe. And any of our listeners who are, are interested could always send me a message anywhere. My DMs are open, and then uh, we can talk about whether it would be a good fit. There you go. The Tuesday game continues to progress. We are definitely entering into a part of the story that I have put way more thought into than it probably deserves, and most of it has just served to make me nervous over whether or not it will land well. So... The party is fighting their way into a castle keep to try and stop the person inside who's starting all these wars. And, uh, they're just about there. So it's going to get very interesting, I think, on the very next episode. I think. Oh, yeah. I don't know, though, because, um... <laughs> <laughs> Alex managed to uh, drive himself all the way up a turret that was a dead end. Oh, I was the leader of the group. I was kicking so much butt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were rolling really well. None of my guys could get away from you because of Sentinel. I mean, I'm going down the stairs. That can't be difficult terrain, can it? I mean, it, I should go down faster. The stairs are difficult terrain both directions. That's not fair. I'm going downhill now. <laughs> that means I should go, like, double what I, what I should go, so... That's not fair. 
I can tell you that one of the funniest memories I have in, of recent D&D, of 5th edition D&D, is where I built a character who had um, Mobile and Sentinel uh, as his feats. And in the very first dungeon we went into, uh, the entryway to this thing was basically like a 40-story staircase. You know, it was straight out of Ghostbusters, and we had to run all the way, you know, down this thing while fighting. And mobile makes it so that if I use a dash action, I can... I am not impeded by difficult terrain. So I was able to get my full double movement going up and down the stairs as we were going. Meanwhile, my partner in this was a dwarf who did not have mobile. So he had less movement than I did, and was experiencing the difficult terrain. <laughs> and I was just blowing down, and then I realized I was getting overwhelmed by too many enemies, so I'd run back up past him and drag the enemies to him, so then we'd fight them together, then I'd run past him again, going back down. He was very frustrated by my <laughs> character just running up and down the stairs. <laughs> Here comes some more people! <laughs> so, mobile's really awesome. It really makes you kind of a god of the battlefield because you can start fighting with a lot of impunity. It's really useful if you have more than one attack on a turn. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have Sentinel yet, so I had to take Sentinel. First. I'm not saying that you chose the wrong thing. I'm just saying it's a good feat that you should think about. But so far, Sentinel has helped me. Oh, Sentinel's awesome. Sentinel is one of my favorites when I'm the party defender. If not my favorite. But, yeah, so... Riken has, is so far having his, like, MVP battle so far of the campaign. I mean, and it was with new dice, too. Yeah, I got some dice from Long Dog Dice, which is Jen, a.k.a. Lozelda's shop. Yeah. Plug those and, long dog dice. Long dog dice. I can't talk. Long dog. <laughs> Sorry. And yeah, I got these dice called Lagoon that they're like kind of these like tealish, kind of like water looking dice. And Gold they hunters. have they yeah they've done well for me. I kept them away from my other dice. So they wouldn't be influenced. <laughs> Uh, yes, the dice superstition is strong with any experienced role player. Yep. Uh, Malachi, how did you do? I was sad that frickin' Drow is stronger than his own good. One <laughs> tried to run away on me, I finally get to attack something, and I... And it's just him running away, <laughs> and, uh... He uh, makes the strength check because I tried to trip him. I was like, going to try to trip him as he was running away. And he's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Psych. Yeah, they have a really, really terrible strength save too, but I rolled a 19 on the die for that one. Yeah, so. yeah I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> Won't let me have any fun, Tristan. <laughs> Sorry. And, and then uh, our <laughs> druid placed a moonbeam down in the hallway and blocked everybody from going forward without taking damage. <laughs> it's, it's not even the first time it's happened. It's wonderful. So, like, the, the, the most recent session was definitely a, a hearkening back to old sessions of, these are lessons we should have learned, but we will never learn these lessons, I guess, where you get narrow areas where um, the party can't spread out and there are doorways um, creating bottlenecks, and so out, the, the players have to move through each other's square, which is difficult terrain, so you run into problems with how far a person can move, and so you get these bottlenecks, and it just clogs up, and then somebody, you know, drops an area of effect that nobody wants to walk through, and everything just grinds to a standstill as so they try to convince the player to make that go away, and they're like, no, I spent a spell slot on it, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> Yeah, and Riken was just like, I'm, I don't have the patience for this, and so he ran through it. 
Made the save, though. <laughs> Made the save, which was very important, because he rolled very high damage. Yep. <laughs> it would have taken a quarter of my health away. It's six seconds to talk, right? Just so it's... you get so each tr each round is six seconds, and so when you talk, it's a free action, but you can only form approximately six seconds worth of words. Okay, so that that's why I said what I said. <laughs> Beam ow! <laughs> At the end, because I already said, Jevil, can you take the moon beam down?" <laughs> I... And then he's like, "Why?" I'm like, "Beam ow!" <laughs> I, I know that one of my old DM's favorite uh, stories was when, in our 3-5 game, uh, we were in a dungeon, and the uh, we had just triggered the boss fight, basically, and it was this strange area with these opening and closing doors. It was like concentric rings. Um, and so, like, you'd open a door and go out into an outer ring, and then you'd be cut off from the center, and you kind of had to manipulate your way through. And the, the boss was just, like, moving around through the different passages. And so... <laughs> um, we figured out one of the traps, and it w I had already used up, like, all of my... pretty much all of my time um, talking... And so somebody, like, comes in the door and addresses my character and tells them about this trap that they figured out that was going to be a problem. And so I was just like, well, I think I can get out two more syllables. So I just said, what? Shit! And on the next uh, person's turn, they came and gave me more information. This is where I just sort of went all in on the kind of everything happens at the same time. And so three people came to tell my character something, and every one of them got the response, what? Shit! <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. My my DM will still <laughs> reference that um, whenever something bad happens. He'll just and and the players start freaking out. The DM will just go, "What shit?" <laughs> and then everybody laughs because they remember. But yeah, um, so talking. It's a uh, it's different for every DM. Um, but, you know, in the book it says six seconds, so that's what I stick to, but some people run it more like anime, where you can just talk as much as you want, and some people are just like, no, you're concentrating too much on combat, and so you can't be distracted by talk. I gotta take my five episodes of powering up and monologuing. Yeah. I mean, I've always... I've never had a problem sticking with just the six-second rule for uh, talking in D&D, &D because I had come from before playing D&D, &D, I, I started in Exalted, and Exalted is a role-playing game that is very much based on anime, um, where it's all about, like, describing ridiculous superhuman feats to do things, and, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of political intrigue and just conversation, there's a lot of role-play in it, and so when it comes to combat, the, like, the book just states flat out in the first page of combat you're basically demigods, you can do whatever you want, you know, you've got this, that, and the other thing you can do during combat, talking, you can talk as much as you want. And so you can just have, like, during combat turns, people can be monologuing while attacking and fighting. <laughs> and it doesn't stretch the turns or anything, like, your, your time to talk is infinite, because that's how it works in, in anime. <laughs> so... I don't know. I, coming from that and then going to d and I'm like, yeah, but we're not super godly things. Just stick to your six seconds. It's not that hard. Plus, I find that it, like, forces a little bit more strategy. Figuring out, like, who you can respond to and how much you can say. And also rule of funny. And also a lot of rule of funny. Like, what shit? Shit. <laughs> And we were playing around a table, so I got to... I was very animated about it. I, like, threw my hands over my head. Just went, what? Shit! <laughs> and I repeated the motion every time I repeated the line, so... Just sort yeah. of that... Compound joke. I think my favorite part of that scene was that, um... The last person before the round ended and it became my turn again... Uh was this person who my character never got along with much anyway, and he runs up to my character and and says, there's a boss, he's here, and it's me. 
Because <laughs> he had run into the boss in the passageways, and the boss had, like, shape-shifted to look like him. But he runs oh, up to my God. character, he's like, the boss is here, and it's me. And my, my character had no context for this. I didn't know what he was saying, so I just assumed that it was a, like, the boss was a dumbass, and he revealed himself to me, so I attacked him. <laughs> He's like, no, no, not me. Just look like me. Yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite part of that scene. Was <laughs> the guy running up to me and trying to tell me that the boss looks like him, phrased it poorly and got attacked because of it. <laughs> That'll teach you. You gotta think before you speak. A story somewhat like that. I also want to hear about the thing Malachi was going to talk about. What not like anything? Final Fantasy. Oh, I'm not gonna talk about that yet because I haven't finished the game yet, and I want to give a very detailed uh, review of my feelings and thoughts of it because it's one of my favorites. It's the update video. Uh, uh, what about first impressions? First impressions, fucking gorgeous. <laughs> uh, language. Beep. CG, beep. <laughs> CG is uh, very well done. It looks very pretty. Um, moving between cutscenes and combat is seamless. Uh, no real big uh, change in the the graphics. It's just you just get different camera angles. Um, so far, pretty cool. Um, but I really want to nitpick it, so I will be giving a full review later. Want to hear my story? Sure, tell us your story. And that's where we'll probably call it after that. All right, I'm not going to give the full backstory of it, but it was a pretty important part of a campaign. Uh, the players had to find a MacGuffin, which was a person. Um, this so person Mr. was important. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, this person was important. And they had to um, track him down. And he didn't want to be found, because he did not want what they were selling. So, were they selling after death? a long... Uh, well, he needed to come back to his home for a very specific reason. He did not want to come back. Okay. It involved responsibility. So, uh, they had... They'd spent some time just trying to track him down. And they kept getting little breadcrumbs of, yeah, there was a hot-headed, uh, red-haired... Uh, man starting a, a fight in this bar. Why do you ask? Finally, uh, they discover he's on a ship because they've gone. They've gone to Fairport and they've uh, checked the um, what is it? The um, documentation for the ships ledger, I suppose, something like that. Uh, the um, like manifest. Yes, they checked. The, they, they checked the ship manifest, which. In itself, to even be in that situation and get to check it was difficult. And one of them had to change his identity because he was from there. So eventually, they get on a ship that is going to let them go on this journey to where the other ship was going. So they can get the guy and say, dude, come home so we can, we can be done with this. Only the ship that can take them only has a first mate and a captain. Because... Uh, the, the, the crew left because they couldn't pay them. The crew left them in Fairport, and the captain's currently drinking his sorrows away. And the first mate's like, yeah, well, we'll take you. I'll go get the captain. We'll sober up Captain Nate, and you can, you can come with us and be our crew. Because it was a group of, like, five or six. So they managed to do that. Uh, the, pro the problem was the cleric was very curious about things, and wanted to investigate every inch of the ship. So... They're in the middle of a battle with Sahuagin to save the king of the, the sea elves in the area when the cleric decides that's a good time to go back to the cargo bay where he's found this box that has an aura of magic about it and open it. So when the battle's over, they find the cleric and he's got... Well, the first mate and the captain find the cleric and he's got a, a evil-looking necklace around his neck that has killed him. 
so they bring him up to the to the above deck uh, where uh, before they can explain what's happened one of the crew one of the crew which is one of the the group the one of the PCs uh, is like what happened and the first mate's like we can explain and he's like you better explain right now and he's like well it's complicated so he straight up kills them because he thinks that they killed their cleric so <laughs> wait, wait, I now we've got a dead cleric and a dead first mate, and we're almost to the city we're headed towards. <laughs> Who's going to so, revive the cleric? That was the cleric's job. Yeah. Well, the cleric wasn't high enough level. They had already done a resurrection where someone owed a church a favor because he got killed by wolves. Oh, and man. now we've got two dead people that they've got to take care of. The first mate, because... Uh, I'll, you'll, I'll explain later. <laughs> and the cleric is <laughs> part of the group. Out of curiosity, are, are you running the old 3-5 system where when you get resurrected, you lose a level? Um, it depends on the spell. Okay. Because uh, cause so, in yes. different groups, I've had different resurrection spells being used. Yeah. There was even a situation where an NPC that they found had to be revived with uh, reincarnation. So he changed races. That's always an interesting one. Yeah, he came back as a half-elf, like, what? Yeah. Because he was a zombie to begin with. <laughs> what? So when they found him, he was undead, and um, they needed to bring him back so he could explain how they could leave the demon plane, but I digress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they get to the port, which is, um, oh, which one was it? Not Dusk Wharf. I can't remember the name of it, but it's the northern port if it ever comes up in our campaign. It smells like fish. And um, they're like, okay, do. well, we don't know what to do about your first mate, but we're going to take our cleric to the church and get him resurrected. So they leave. And when they come back to the ship, because now the cleric has been resurrected and also owes that church five years of service after he finishes his schooling, uh, the captain's not there. He's being arrested. And they're like, what? And uh, the, one of the customs officials is like, you don't know that guy, do you? They're like, no, we don't know that guy. We don't know who, what ship is this? <laughs> then they uh, settle into a hotel. Uh, and they're talking over it. And they're like, I, I'm pretty sure Captain has no idea what's going on. So we need to res resurrect the first mate that we killed. <laughs> they go and get his body that's still on the ship. And they take him to the church, and now the cleric owes another five years of service. And he says, well, I can't explain, which is what he said before, and then he died. But he says, hang tight, I'm going to get our captain, and we may have to leave in a hurry. So he's gone for like four days. And the only explanation they got was, he's in trouble with the local thieves guild. And after four days of just biding their time doing random stuff... Finally, he shows up in the middle of the night and says, all right, pack your stuff. we got to go right now. So they do that. They get on the ship and they take off the, the five or six of them plus the crew of two. And he explains after the fact that there had been this magic item back down south when their voyage began uh, before they even got on the ship. Uh, that it was a the scarab of death or something like that. It's like a necklace that it kills you if you wear it. And he had discovered a rogue's guild trying to sell it to the highest bidder. So he took it and then put it on the ship and then said, okay, let's go. But it was attracting trouble, like sea monsters attacking them constantly. And the crew were on edge and they couldn't be paid immediately. So they just left. And then... Uh, that was the result of that. Like, their ship kept getting attacked. Like at one point it got attacked by a, a minor Kraken sort of creature. And they were like, well, it would have been nice if you told us. Would have been. And then he's like, okay, we'll drop you off and uh, we still have it. And they're like, we still have it? And he's like, yeah, the Thieves Guild tried to take it. So we still have it. I thought it was a safe place to drop it off, but the Thieves Guild found out about it. So we got to go and we have it with us. <laughs> During that time, they had found the guy they were looking for and convinced him to come back with them. And he was real confused. And then they all went home. So it was a really interesting situation. Yeah, it 
it sounds like um, it sounds like this party has a lot of the same problems that my party has, which is they don't communicate with each other. Yeah, until... if this first mate had been part of the, the uh, of the actual cast, it would have been just like your group. <laughs> they just not until a problem has started does anybody go, "Oh yeah, no, this actually has to do with my backstory." <laughs> I feel like Cam would have been constantly confused and upset. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Why is no one talking? And why did we just punch a homeless man? It's our charm. Because that happened. Or was it... No, it was an old guy that lived somewhere, and we walked into his house and knocked him out. No, wasn't it... Pete? Well, no, Tam wasn't, at, wasn't here at that part, was he? Where are we... <laughs> Where we just punched people in the street. Was that when you... No, Tim was there when uh, we went to a city and we needed information from this dude, so we went into his house and knocked him out. And my character was really upset and argued with the leader of the, of the group for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Man, I don't remember. I don't remember what was that. that. I remember there was like something... Like in the streets, and someone accused someone of being a thief, and then I think Riken punched the guy that was accused of the thief of being a thief. So I, I the most of the thief stuff happened in Melthea um, when you were still riding south to get out of Evangard, and yes, a person. I do remember the thief situation. Yeah, a person ran by with a stolen item, and the party yeah. helped uh, apprehend that person. It was after that. It was it was different. It was later on in the campaign. Yeah. So when said Alex was a thief, Alex punched him, knocked him out, and we went into his home and tied him up. <laughs> I, I'm blown away that I can't remember this because I usually remember all the details of of everything and this is not... I remember ridiculous. because it was kind of a big moment. It was when Tam started to realize he didn't fit with the group. They were not as heroic as they said they were. Right, because he was here like hero worshipping before that. Yeah. And then there was the whole situation. I missed a, camp, uh, I missed a, a session yeah. and I came back and you said, just so you know, they killed clerics and then blames it on someone else. <laughs> I'm like, they what? Yeah. And Tam was like, they what? Yeah. So you know. They were not good at keeping that secret. To be fair, I missed the session before that, and they came upon them killing Clay. And then, <laughs> and then proceeded to not make the situation better. <laughs> but you did get them out of there alive. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was too tough having, se uh, like, people miss sessions, so now I just, like, have to postpone or cancel if somebody can't make it, and luckily, um, luckily that isn't too frequent a thing. At the beginning of this year, like, between the beginning of December and, like, the middle of February, it was awful, because it was just... Holiday, sickness, travel, holiday, <laughs> like, just one thing after another. Like, we couldn't string two sessions in a row. And now we're back on a regular schedule, and I'm much, much happier. Yeah, that is nice. We're progressing. So, anything else? I don't have anything else. I think I've walked about two miles. Nice. So now you gotta walk back. When I was, well, it's a circle. It's a, it's a, it's a miles uh, circle. Yeah. Uh, when I was underemployed in Texas, I would walk about six miles a day, four or five days a week. Part of that for Amy's, right? Uh, Amy's was definitely like the motivation to go the full six miles. It was like the excuse. <laughs> Otherwise, it was... you would go half that distance and no, no, go, no, no Amy's for me. No, it w Amy's would add two miles, so it would be four miles without it. I would walk to um, the subway to get 
my daily sandwich. And that would be pretty much the only thing I was eating all day because I had no income. So I was trying to limit my food and I decided I would also get exercise doing it. And so it was a two mile walk one way to get to the subway two miles back. And then if I wanted Amy's, then I would justify the Amy's with, well, I have to walk another mile out of the way and a mile back uh, if I do that. So that should be fine. I lost a lot of weight. It's a good thing. And speaking of food, totally making tacos for everyone when we get to yeah, I'm waiting to, to find out if RTX is going to happen or if it's going to be a not till next year thing. Okay, don't do that to me, Tristan. I just, I'm being realistic. Remind me of reality. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, we're not going to know that for like another month or two. Yeah, we're really not going to be certain well, okay. until like the day of. Next time I see you guys, I'm making tacos. That sounds good to me. That's my latest thing that I've gotten really good at. It. Tacos are great. I love tacos. Tacos. When I talk to Brazilians, they look at this and they're like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Taco." We have tacos. We have Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm like, Taco Bell's okay, but they're not. They're like, well, we, I've never actually had. I'm like, what? <laughs> Well, then you can treat them to homemade tacos. Like the burgers last time, yeah. I still haven't eaten at Whataburger, Joseph. What? I've what? still never eaten at Whataburger. Even I've eaten at Whataburger. The ketchup uh, out of the bottle they some like McDonald's or Walmart. Of course, I ate at the uh, airport Whataburger that was in Dallas when I had a layover. From well, there's no airport Whataburger at Bergstrom, so and I don't fly through Dallas anymore, so I haven't been yeah. able to do that. What does Bergstrom have for food? They have an Amy's. I've been there like once. They have a they salt have lick. They have an Amy's, they have a salt lick, and then they have a sandwich shop that I usually go to. Um, I mean, they, they actually... I, I remember last year... Like, they just got done, I think, between RTXs, like, a bunch of renovations. So they had actually quite a few new uh, restaurant places. Yeah, I mean, there was a, there's a bunch there, but Whataburger isn't one of them. No. Well, Tristan, maybe I'll just bring you Whataburger next time I see you. <laughs> I might have to have you do that, because I just never remember to do it. It's It's on par with the burgers I made. Nice. I like the burgers you made. They were good. They're not as thick, but there's just it's just really good. Sounds good. All right, we're at almost forty five minutes. Shall we call it there? Yes. Yeah. We All got right. some halo to play. Malachi. Mm. What are we doing? Get in the flip out of here. All right, let's flip out. That topic. Flip in the get. Oh no, Che. All right, so you talk and you don't know if RTX is going to be going on other than the date that they already changed, moved they've, it to. They've already moved it, but I mean, like, I have doubts. I have doubts. That's all. There's no news. There's no actual news. I just have doubts. And anyway, good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> good night. Good night. Right. Hashtag good night. Good Tristan night. means this. Tech is opening prematurely. I. <sighs> Heh <laughs>